Electronic circuits are like intricate puzzles made up of various electronic components. The first step in mastering circuit design, analysis and repair is getting to know these components and understanding what they do. With countless components out there, each with its own variations, learning about them can feel a bit overwhelming. But don't worry, I'm here to help. In this video, I'm going to dive into five essential electronic components and explain how they work their magic. By the way, this is the second episode of my basic component series. In the last episode, I covered six components and I'll explore even more in the upcoming ones. Stick around to uncover all the fantastic details. This video is sponsored by PCBWay.com. In almost all electronic devices, we need switches, a component that triggers the whole device or a part of it like a DC motor. In such a case, we need a component called a switch. Switches are divided into three main categories, mechanical switches, electromechanical switches, and electronic switches. I think mechanical switches are very simple components like rocker switches, tactile switches, toggle switches, limit switches, or others. It's a waste of time if I explain them, so I'm moving on to the second type skipping mechanical switches. Component number one, relays. The biggest problem with mechanical switches is the need for a human operator. They can't be automated. Suppose you use a rocker switch to control the state of a DC motor. You can turn the motor on by toggling the rocker switch and to stop the motor you need to press the rocker switch again. The motor can't be turned on or off automatically if needed. To make a component like a DC motor turn on and off automatically, you need to use an electrically controllable device like a relay. These are electromechanical switches called relays. By applying a low power signal to these control terminals, this one and this one, the switch inside the component toggles and can be used to control any kind of load. However, there are some limitations here written on the relay's body. On any relay switch, there are specifications printed on the component that determine the trigger voltage and switch's max power. For example, this relay is triggered by 12 volts. Look here. Meaning that uh, by applying 12 volts to its coil terminal, this one and this one, this uh, relay switch gets activated. It can switch loads with a maximum operating voltage of up to 250 volts and drawing 10 amperes of current. And also, uh, this is a 5 volt relay, meaning that this relay will activate uh, if I apply 5 volts to its control terminals. Look, when I apply 5 volts, the relay activates and you can hear the sound. A relay usually has 5 terminals. Two are used for triggering the relay called C1 and C2, uh, referred to as control or coil terminals. Other pins are COM, NC and NO. An electromagnet inside the relay activates when proper voltage is applied, attracting the electrode and disconnecting COM terminal from NC and connecting COM terminal to normally open terminal. Relays are very good switches, but they have their own pros and cons. Some disadvantages of relays are their low switching speed, low durability, audible and electrical noise, high weight and large size, limited lifespan due to mechanical wear and tear and other factors. So we often prefer to use third type of switches, which are electronic switches. One of the most famous electronic switch is Component number two, transistors. Transistors are the most important and I think the most complicated component among basic electronic components. They come in various shapes, types, size, characteristics and part numbers. Although they seem completely different, they do the same job, just the parameters are different. 
These are schematic symbols of BJTs or bipolar junction transistors. These transistors have base, emitter, and collector terminals and are divided into NPNs and PNPs. Look, there is an arrow on the emitter terminal. If the arrow is inward like this, it's a PNP. And if the arrow is outward like this, it's an NPN. Be aware that the arrow is always on the emitter terminal. You may ask, what is the technical difference between NPNs and PNPs? They differ in several aspects, but for simplicity, NPNs are used for switching the low side of the power supply and PNPs are used for switching the high side of the power supply. Let me give you an example. When you need to switch a DC load like this DC motor, you can connect one of its leads to ground and then switch the other lead to VCC or you can fix one of its leads to VCC and then switch the other lead to ground. If you want to fix one of its leads to VCC and then switch the other lead to ground, you have to use an NPN type transistor and if you want to fix one of its leads to ground and switch the other lead to VCC, you have to use a PNP type transistor. After setting up these circuits, you need some current to flow to or from the base terminal to turn the transistor and eventually the load on. But there is a subtle point here. To do that, it's enough to apply a voltage greater than 0.7 volts to base emitter junction of an NPN type transistor or a voltage greater than 0.7 volts to emitter base junction of a PNP type transistor. Uh, I'm saying that in another words. For a PNP type, the emitter base has to be more than 0.7 volts and for the an NPN the base emitter has to be more than 0.7 volts. C945 and 2N2222 are the most popular BJT part numbers. By the way, when somebody refers to a component as a transistor, they usually mean bipolar junction transistors. However, there is another type of transistor that is as popular as BJTs. But before that, I want to introduce the sponsor of this video, PCBWay.com. I'm proud to introduce PCBWay because they are professionals in manufacturing PCBs. They offer a wide range of services, including PCB prototyping, CNC machining, 3D printings and more. Submitting an order on their website is simple. You just need to sign up, fill out this form, wait for the invoice, pay the invoice and then it's done. Your parcel is on its way to your address. Anyway, let's move on to our next component. Component number three, MOSFETs. MOSFETs are another kind of transistors with different characteristics. These are schematic symbols of MOSFETs. They have three terminals, gate, drain, and source terminals. This is an N channel and this one is a P channel MOSFET. Like what we had in BJTs, there is an arrow in the MOSFET schematic symbols and always the arrow is connected to source terminal. If the arrow is inward like this, the MOSFET is N channel and if the arrow is outward, then the MOSFET is a P channel MOSFET. We can use MOSFETs to switch DC loads. N channels are used to switch the ground side of the power supply and P channels are used to switch the high side of the power supply. Each MOSFET has a parameter called VT referred to as the threshold voltage, say 4 volts, 5 volts, 10 volts for example. By applying a voltage greater than the threshold voltage to gate source, look gate source and N channel turns on and lets current pass from its drain to its source. On the other hand, a P channel MOSFET turns on when the voltage at the source gate, not gate source like this, source gate 
is greater than the threshold voltage. For a P-channel, the source gate has to be greater than the threshold, and for an N-channel, the gate source has to be greater than the threshold. By the way, all these transistors, PJTs, or MOSFETs, or other types, can also be used to amplify a voltage signal. There are some other transistor types made by combining two transistors. Components like Darlington pairs are made by combining a, a two BJTs or IGBTs which are made by combining a BJT and a MOSFET. Anyway, I'm going to ask you a question. Why are there several types and numerous part numbers for each of these transistor types? The answer is the condition. How much current does the load drops? How much is the VCC voltage? How much current and voltage can be provided to the transistor? And there are so many other conditions. This is why there are several types and so many part numbers for each transistor types. Transistors are very useful, right? But they have a big problem. Can you guess what is so bad about transistors? Yes. They only switch DC and they can't switch AC. So if you want to switch AC and you don't want to use relays, you need another electronic switch. You have to use component number four, triacs. Triacs are AC switches. When you need to switch an AC load automatically and you don't want to use relays, you can use triacs instead. This is a schematic symbol of a triac. It has three terminals, gate and two anodes, A1 and A2. By triggering the gate terminal, the triac starts to conduct AC voltage through its anode terminals. Look, all of these are triacs. They look like transistors, right? Triacs are used inside many home appliances. For example, in vacuum cleaners, they control the speed of the motor to adjust the power of suction. Or in some lighting systems, they dim AC light bulbs. Using triacs is dangerous for beginners and you need to know many points about them to use them safely and efficiently. But if you want to use them without studying them, you can use the next component instead. Component number five, SSRs or solid state relays. Look, these are AC SSRs used to switch AC loads. These components are super easy to use. You just need to apply a low DC voltage to these input terminals and then it will start conducting AC voltage through its output terminals. In the previous episode, I covered six components and in this video, I have covered five more components. This video was just an introduction to these components. Using them in real-world projects requires more knowledge and experience. I'll cover more details about each component in the project videos. Also, I'll cover more components in the next episodes. Well, my friend, this video is ending. I hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed watching this video, don't forget to hit that thumbs up button. And if you like this video, make sure to subscribe for more. See you in the next video.